this New Year's at Guitar Center, it's time to play music. Come in and get hands-on with the world's best selection of guitars, drums, keyboards, and more. And with deals like an Epiphone Les Paul for just $99, 25% off all Zildjian drumsticks, or a digital reference vocal mic for just $19, there has never been a better time to play music. We'll help you find exactly what you're looking for and save big New Year's weekend at Guitar Center. All right, you hit the download button on the Steve Austin Show Unleashed. And if you ain't subscribed on iTunes yet, you sure as hell ought to. You can save yourself the trouble of grabbing new episodes every week if you just hit the subscribe button. And, hey, do me another favor and leave a five-star rating and comment on iTunes after you subscribe because them five-star ratings and comments really help a brother out. Anyway, Broken Skull Challenge coming up on January 3rd on CMT. The toughest, baddest, coolest show on TV, bar none. January 3rd on CMT. Hell yeah. New t-shirts, ProWrestlingTees.com. Five more badass shirts that I wear on the upcoming season of Broken Skull Challenge. And yes, Broken Skull IPA, available like a mug at El Segundo Brewing Company. Whole Foods, Total Wines, and InsideTheCellar.com. Yeah, order it online. I think it's out of stock right now. And if they ship to your state, then you can drink the baddest IPA in the United States of America. Stop by the tap room at 140 Main Street. Swig a beer for the working man. And also, here's another shout-out. They just brewed a, a badass batch of standard crude, 11.5% alcohol. Bring a designated driver. That is some damn good beer. Anyway, enough with the chit-chat. Let's get rolling. Merry Christmas to everybody. Got a little conversation going with my buddy, Ted Fowler. Three, six, one. The following program is a PodcastOne.com production. He started in a small town in Texas. Worked his ass off to become one of the most famous wrestlers of all time. We're going to take care of business tonight, and that's the bottom line. And now he's dominating the world of on-demand audio. And he's doing it for the working man. This is a damn good outlet for me to spew the bullshit off my brain. This is Steve Austin Unleashed. Unleashed. All right, everybody, welcome to the Steve Austin Show. Why I'm coming to you from the Broken Skull Ranch over here in South Texas, the pride of South Texas. God damn it, I'm sitting here at the kitchen table over at Ted Fowler's section of the ranch over here, sipping on a margarita at about five minutes till one o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. Hey, everybody, uh, almost a happy new year and Merry Christmas to everybody, man. I hope the holiday season is good to everybody. We're down here chilling at the ranch. And, Teddy, welcome to the show. It's good to see you this morning, although I've already seen you a couple of times. <laughs> now that we're sitting each other across the table, what the fuck's going on today? That's good to see you as well. I just got through well, working thanks. on I come for the heart. <laughs> <laughs> car is on. <laughs> it's a season of giving, and I'm yeah. giving it my all right there, I told there, Teddy, Mr. I said, we got to do a podcast. He's out there working on the tractor. I said, you got any stories? I said, not really. I said, well, you've been married a time or two. I said, come up with some fucking bullshit. <laughs> Did you come up with any bullshit? Oh, about being married? Yeah, oh, you. You, God damn. I mean, so sometimes you, you, you just got to fabricate stuff. Hey, but before we fabricate anything, Teddy, no, this, this, this uh, whole podcast is a total shoot. Everything that happens today, shit happened today. Here's what happened. Uh, we've been out here doing work. Teddy and I have been tagging off on a Komodo tractor. We've been mowing this whole place up, getting it all slickered down. It looks really, really nice. Every stitch of grass is mowed out here, Teddy. Right. The ranch is in phenomenal shape. Finally, we got a little bit of frost to hit the ground the other day, kind of put a little bit of stop on some of the growth. Hopefully get another freeze to stop that grass from growing. We've been fortunate to get so much rain, but nonetheless... I was down there on the low side of the property over there by the river cutting uh, on that shredder, and I'll be goddamn, and I don't know what I did, but I busted one of the hoses to my batwing shredder. Now, these are hydraulic lines full of hydraulic fluid to raise and lower the mower deck or the wings to pass through fences and what forth, and what forth stuff like that. So when I busted that coupling off, I couldn't raise the center part of my deck. I was fucked for the day. I was able to mow a little bit and uh, pull the bat wings up and finally able to, to limp back in into the house. So that warranted a trip to the small town of Poteet, Texas, 
where we do business with Tuttle Motors, and uh, they sell tractors and all kinds of stuff over there. So I sent Eldon, the guy that owns the place over there, a couple of pictures of the couple of I'd busted off that hose and got on my way in my 96 supercharged Chevy Suburban and got over there. Everything's hunky-dory. I'm just cruising along, running radar, 75, 80, not in a real big hurry. I get there, the guys look at my problem, make me a new hose. I get some hydraulic fluid, a couple of fittings, because in the meantime, Teddy was working on my John Deere tractor. Now, Teddy, what the fuck was going on with the John Deere tractor? Because I've had that tractor for about 15, 18 years. Fuck, it ain't got no hours on it. It was starred up like a motherfucker, but in time you try to put it in gear, it would shut down, and you had diagnosed it as the rats had eaten the central wires underneath the seat. So when you sit on that tractor, if you get up, it'll shut down on you. Or in this case, if you put it in gear, it shut down on you. What, diagnose it, what the fuck happened? Yeah, I mean, I guess that obviously that's a safety mechanism to keep you from, you know, jumping off of the tractor and having it still be under power. Um, you know, it never dawned on me until I talked to the guys there and kind of told them what was going on. And once I lifted the seat, saw that pressure switch, those wires were, you know, chewed through and through. And... You know, then then it was a simple repair. Once it was shown to me, and I you know figured it out, just spliced another piece of wire on there, some female ends, and hooked it back up and fired right up. So Teddy, I was over at the Tuttle Motorsports in Poteet talking to Eldon and the other guys in there. I said, "Well, shit, Teddy, take a picture and send me, uh, so I can show these guys what you're talking about." And of course. I got one motherfucking bar service <laughs> off my AT&T. I said, Ellen, I said, y'all ain't got no sci-fi. sci-fi. Y'all ain't got no Wi-Fi <laughs> up in this motherfucker. It might as well have been a science fiction goddamn gimmick. <laughs> Headaches, hassles, and horse shit. If it can go wrong, it does go wrong at the Broken Skull Ranch. And I wanted to get that tractor up and running because it runs like a top. Right. just wouldn't go nowhere with that safety switch. Correct. So finally, Teddy's pictures come through. We're scrolling through there, making sure that they're all good to go. And they're handing me bits and pieces of wire. And I got Teddy on speakerphone. Got about we got a fucking conference call. A Tunnel Motorsports Teddy over there, head honcho, trying to tell us what we need, what he's got, what the problem is. So anyway, I picked up all the parts, and here's uh, uh, where I'm about to go into my cocksucker of the week story. But Teddy, with the parts that I was able to come home with, so you wired everything up. She's running now. Yes, good sir. to go. Yep, yep, good to go. You bought all the right parts, and I put it together. So we're in business. Goddamn, it's the first track, not the second tractor uh, I ever bought. It's a John. Deer, it's a 4600 and four wheel drive tractor, uh, six foot shredder, got a bucket on the front of it. Back when I lived in Georgia, Teddy, I had a 52 Ford 8 in tractor, and those were the cat's <laughs> ass back in the right. day. And uh, I mean, you know, not not so much anymore, but nonetheless, uh, so I've had that John Deere tractor ever since it was brand new, and it's been fucking taken care of and you know, babied. I take care of Correct. everything I got. So anyway, I get on my way. I've got my brand new hose from a Batwing shredder. I got the parts that Teddy needs to fix the John Deere. I get in my '96 Black Suburban with the supercharger. Got my seatbelt on, driving safe as a motherfucker. I'm leaving Poteet. I'm going south on 16, and there's the two-lane road going that way, and then it goes into a single lane. Well. I'm in the left-hand lane, and I've got the lead on an 18-wheeler uh, belly, belly dump truck is what they call a belly dump truck. is basically an 18-wheeler, and it carries a lot of cargo, whether it's dirt, gravel, whatever, two locations, and they just open the underside of it, and all the materials fall out. So anyway, I've got one of those trying to pass me at the last fucking minute, Teddy. It's 45 mile per hour speed zone. I'm going 50. I'm running radar, but I'm just driving the speed limit. Five right. minutes, five miles over the speed limit. This stupid cocksucker tries to pass me in the right hand lane. I've got him by a link and a half, uh, a length and a half of vehicle, and he tries to pass me on the right hand side, and damn near side swipes me and kills me. And as I see him trying to make this idiotic, stupid, cocksucking, maniacal, dumb fuck move, I jump on the gas. The supercharged 350 responds accordingly, jumps back out in front of him, and God damn it, Teddy, I ain't been so fucking mad in 15 to 20 years. <laughs> I would have loved We're to We're going there. about 50, 55 miles an hour, and I roll, hit the power window button on my goddamn power window. 
And I'm not advocating road rage, but when someone does something so asinine, stupid, and I don't think my description told you how stupid of a maneuver this guy had made with oncoming traffic, you know, coming up and into a double uh, yellow line, motherfucker, I am flipping him off, giving him the bird over the goddamn roof of my Suburban, <laughs> hit the right blinker, and I'm doing the old pullover routine. <laughs> He don't want to pull over. Now, I could have motherfucked him and braked him and just shut him down on the road, but that would have been stupid. Right. I was basically trying to put the fear of God in this motherfucker for damn near ending the life of a global icon and national treasure. I'd be uh, real sad to say, after just turning 51 years of age, goddamn tell you, I'm happy the motherfucker just be 51. <laughs> then all of a sudden, some fucking idiot truck driver, and I've got a lot of truck drivers who listen to the show, and they're a working man, and they work hard for the money and they do a hell of a job at it but you've also got some real stupid motherfuckers out there that are driving these trucks and they think just because they got a big ass truck that they own the road you don't own the fucking road drive safely teddy from there on out when you get on 16 the, the speed limit goes from 70 to 75 and you know me i'm usually running 75 to 85 right. running radar I drove 58 miles an hour the entire way with that cocksucker behind me, and he stayed behind me by about a half mile. <laughs> and then uh, oh, oh, that, that's when uh, we got into Jordanton. And uh, when we got into Jordanton, I made sure that I hit the red light. And once I got the red light hit, I get out of the Suburban, shut the door, and I look back at this motherfucker, and he's got one of those kind of 18 wheelers, got the flat glass, so you can't see inside right. there too much. Right. And I flipped that motherfucker off. I said, fuck you, you stupid motherfucker. You almost killed my ass. I said, fuck you. I got back in my suburban. I put my seatbelt on. <laughs> and when the light turned green, I got on about my merry way. We pulled into Tilden. He stayed behind me the whole way because it was about a 33-mile drive from there. And uh, right when I was going to pull over to Joe's Market and pick up a package for Kristen, he turned left there on 72. So my cocksucker of the week award goes to the stupid piece of shit that was driving that truck. I don't know what company you work for. I didn't get that. I didn't take a picture of your license plate number. Uh, I wasn't going to get into a case of road rage, but that was so fucking asinine and stupid. My, my message or my moral of the story is this. Share the fucking road. If you drive an 18-wheeler, swig of beer, swig of water. A lot of hard-working motherfuckers out there. But for this one specific idiot driving this piece of shit, big-ass 18-wheel truck that almost ended my life, go fuck yourself. Teddy, do we need to segue into a fucking warm puppy dog story from <laughs> sound, here? Sound like somebody needs a hug. Got, no, no, fuck a hug. I, I made a margarita. <laughs> I came in, my wife was out uh, picking up dog shit in front of the house with a scooper. We got six dogs out here. We got about a one-acre yard, and there's so much dog shit out there, she's constantly busy picking up dog shit. I picked up the dog shit the other day. I made mention of that to score me some brownie points. She said, you're drinking margaritas already? And you know, now as we speak, it's five minutes after one o'clock, and normally we don't start drinking until about 3.45. Correct. I'll send Ted a text message. Margarita's 345. Yep. So he comes over, we make a single, and then we go out to the deer stand. We're not slopped up. It's just one little drink before we hit the deer stand, and that's how our program works. But this cocksucker of the week, and I'm going to go ahead and dwell on this one more time, go fuck yourself. Thank you very much. And fuck you and your Christmas. <laughs> Daddy, how do you segue out of a story like that? You got any stories about pussy? Fuck it. Ted ain't got shit. Let me take a swig here. I told you I need to get back to the house. I need to get back to Rockport. Oh, dude, I got a story for you. Here's how you segue out of a truck driving incident like that. Nonetheless, I'm okay. I don't want uh, road rage. I wasn't going to do anything to the guy, but I, I made it known uh, that, dude, when you cut somebody off in the mood that I was in when I stepped out of Suburban, you got to realize I haven't shaved in two months. I'm about 6'1", 280, sunglasses and a, and a, and a, and yeah. a fucking uh, hat on. Fuck, I don't know who the UFC heavyweight champion is right now, but I guarantee if you put me and him in an octagon at that moment, I don't think he'd have a chance. <laughs> Dana White, book it. <laughs>
I'm just kidding. Respect to the heavyweight champion of the UFC. I am a huge fan. Teddy, we had an interesting incident the other day. There's a phenomenon called buck fever. (laughs) Buck fever is just a sense of being about to draw down on an animal. We're not going to go into the fact of uh, killing a bunch of shit because I know there's people that don't believe in deer hunting or whatever, but I'm a proud hunter. always have been, as is Teddy, and will be a lifelong hunter. But there's a phenomenon known as buck fever, and all of a sudden, you can look at a buck for five minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, two minutes everything's fine everything's fine correct all of a sudden you decide that you want to put a crosshair or you know put a fletch uh put your uh your bow sights on that deer and take that deer shit goes cattywampus <laughs> teddy was out hunting a big buck the other day and i said man there's a good deer over at so-and-so stand why don't you go over there and take a look at it and see, see see what you want to do i said you make the call teddy what happened well, hey, make sure you do that breathing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you described the story the other day. I'm like, I'm it sounded like the first time someone had ever jerked off. <laughs> well, I had seen that deer once before. Remember, the bully eight ran him off. So and when, when Ted saw about a bully eight, we, we got some eight point deer out there. Your eight points are, you know, they're not really desirable deer because you want 10s and 12s, et cetera, breeding. But those eight points, because they're out there fighting, they're about to go into rut. They're pre-rut right now. Mm -hmm. They're pushing. And so those eight points will go out there, and some of them are just, it don't matter. If they just got a a medium-sized rack, whatever, they'll whip a big buck's ass, and they'll run his ass off. And those are the bucks that you want breeding not your fucking eight points so they can cause a lot of you know bullshit so you're trying to get rid of them correct correct yeah and he had run the old man off and the one that i was going after so next day i went in the afternoon put a bullet in him no problem a couple of days goes by and you need that area to cool off because the old guys that got run off don't, you know, they're not anxious to go back and, you know, get an ass whooping. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, 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 yeah. They, it took them a while to get the word on the street, hey, the bully's no longer there. Right. And then they start easing back into the area. So I go for an evening hunt, and lo and behold, <laughs> damn, that buck walks out, you know, the big one that I'm going after. And I sat there and watched him for a minute, and I said, you know, Last time I blew my opportunity because he was he was standing there, and then the bully ran him off. I said, man, I'm not waiting this time. So I stick the barrel of the gun out the window. <laughs> I look through the scope, and God damn, that scope is moving around like a son of a bitch. And I'm like, man, are you kidding me? And I'm tightening up on the stock, and I'm trying to concentrate. You know, when you've got those uh, the hearing protectors on, you can really hear yourself breathe. And, I mean, you can hear your heartbeat and so everything. So you're wearing yeah. those old school plastic earmuffs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the big ones. And all I hear in there is, boom, 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 boom. That, you know, and then. <laughs> you got you the know. heartbeat going. I'll tell you, dude, I've had to have it a couple of years ago. And it's like, I'm going to have a heart attack. I'm going to shoot this motherfucker. <laughs> Dude, I start throwing a cramp in my right arm. I'm holding that, you know, and I've got the steady, a great rest in that blind. You know, goddamn, I thought my top crosshair had come loose because that thing is just shaking, and I'm going, fuck, are you kidding me? Dude, I put the gun down, and, of course, the deer's just walking around, you know, do-do-do. I put the gun down, and I'm, like, shaking, you know, shaking my hands out, you know, like, whoa, you know, get that all over, you know, try to compose yourself. (laughs) Regain your composure, sir. Regain your composure, as Gordon Sully would say. Who'd have thought I needed to take a brown bag to the blind with me, you know, start breathing in that thing. I'm sitting they're going man you are kidding me i mean we've all shot you know shot a bunch of deer so i'm like god damn it come on man get your shit together so pick the gun back up put it out the window look through the scope and it's even worse because <laughs> now i'm really thinking about it and i've got a death grip on that on that rifle and i i just i put my head down and i'm like fuck i can't do it <laughs> Because I'm afraid of taking a bad shot and have yeah, it dude. run off. Yeah, pressure's on. Yeah. You, don't, you, don't, yeah. you don't make a bad shot on an animal. For, yeah. for those of you that don't like to hunt, you know, for, for us hunters and people that do like to hunt, hey, man, you want to make a quick, clean, efficient kill. Yeah, yeah. You know, so... Uh, but I, dude, tell me about that breathing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's like that first time you got... <laughs> Dude, 
dude. It's like that first time you got a piece of ass, man. That's <laughs> fucking hearts going like that. <laughs> I can put the gun down. Yeah. Dude, when your eyes are moving because your heart's beating so goddamn fast, that's that's when you know you're doing something right. Dude, you had yeah. a heebie-jeebies like I stepped off that goddamn elevator at the Grand Hyatt uh, Hotel in uh, Seattle right before my last smash when they put <laughs> four liters of fluid in me. I've been running a little bit hard, drinking too much whiskey, too much coffee, not enough water. Shit wigged out on me. So what happened? No, I put the put the gun down, and I gave up on it. I just said, man, like, I don't want to risk making a bad shot. You know, so the hell with it. And then I sat there and I thought, fuck, how am I going to play this one off? You know, what kind of story? Because <laughs> if I go there and tell tell you, you know, hey, dude, man, I was shaking like a dog shit in a peach pit, man. I couldn't pull it off, you know. And I, I was like, you know, fuck it. I'll just say it, you know. But it's cool to get that excited about, you know, shooting the deer. Um, went back the next night. or. No, I think it was the next morning. Yeah. Yeah, next morning, he comes walking out, and it's like, you know, a complete 180. I mean, still a little bit of nerves, but I'd already seen him. I knew what I was going up for. Um, You know, he turned broadside and thump, you know, and that was it. End of story. You know what? Teddy, if this truck driver hadn't ran me off uh, the road, uh, you and I are pretty good friends. We've known each other a long time. Done a lot of work out here at the goddamn Broken Skull Ranch, blood, sweat, and tears, trying to get this place in shape, grow some big deer. I, I, and, and you know, I'm a straight shooter, but until that truck driver ran me off the road, you were the leading candidate for Cocksucker of the Week. <laughs> I'm glad to see I'd gotten replaced. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure we were going to go there. <laughs> if I had, <laughs> If I hadn't been run over, by, run off the road, almost killed by the truck driver, you would have won cocksucker of the week. Because, uh, and this is not out of malice, <laughs> but this is just out of a clusterfuck that ensued oh, on another deer that you shot. Oh. Teddy took a hell of a deer. Deer scored one sixty five for those of you in the Boone and Crockett numbers. It was an awesome deer. The deer is seven and a half years old. It was his time to go. The perfect age, man. Six and a half, depending on the prime, but this this deer was in its prime. Been watching the deer for what three, four years? Oh, at least, yeah. And so uh, Teddy had named this deer Jack Daniels, and I said, "Dude, I said, man, that deer seven and a half, a man, he's going to go down from here." I said, "You need to go shoot that deer, and if, if you see him, because there's no givens out here." And uh, so Ted was lucky enough to happen upon Jack Daniels and took him down. And then uh, so over here at my cleaning station, we have two uh winches to winch these deer up and then uh one of them is the far side no one wants to clean on that side because there is a metal eye beam for all practical intensive purposes that you could uh fuck something up on when you cross it over to put it into the cooler so i was uh cleaning a cool deer that i had shot it was a six point and uh he needed to go and teddy was over there cleaning jack daniels a deer that just scored 165 what did a deer have 32 inches of mass 36 36 inches yeah. of mass my bad yeah big Big, uh, good mass, and uh, probably second to Stomper, who was 40, and yeah. so that was great mass. And that deer didn't have a great spread, but god damn him, fucking G2s uh, started adding up. So anyway, Teddy uh, ended up, uh, if you know anything about deer hunting, when you start looking at your points, you know, your dog catches or your brow tines or your G1s, and then they just go out G2, G3, G4, G5, if you're lucky enough to get that G5. So anyway, that's how the G systems work. They're tines. They're points on a deer. So I'm putting my deer in the cooler, and all of a sudden, Teddy's transferring his over to the other pulley system so he can weigh the deer. We always weigh our deer when we field dress them to see about the body weight and, and do all our uh, due diligence in 411. And all of a sudden, he slams that deer into that goddamn metal beam. And I just jokingly said, hey, dude, don't break off the main beam on that bitch. <laughs> Teddy, what happened? Well, about three and a half inches of the antler tip broke off and it hit me in the chest. And I'm like, dude, are you shitting me? Because when you said that, you weren't looking at me. You know, you had your back to me. And I was like, fuck, did I really just do that? And then you turn around and I go, look, and I hold it up. And you're like, you <laughs> fucking yeah, look idiot. His face, like, yeah. <laughs> this is the biggest deer I ever shot in my life. And I just broke off his foot. Oh, G2 or 3? G3. Broke off his G3, about three inches of it. I oh. said, God. 
Teddy got his taxidermist on speed dial. Hey, man. <laughs> what did the taxidermist say? He said, stay out of the jack. <laughs> He said, "You got." The, he goes, "You got the tip, right?" Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, he good tax. And yeah, a lot he of people, you know, like if I shoot a deer that's been broke up because you've been fighting, I don't, I don't ever repair anything. But when you've taken a deer, he's intact, and you break yeah. something off, you got to have it, motherfucker, yeah. fixed. Oh, it's a it's a relatively easy fix, but I mean, it's just a colossal, colossal fuck up. You know, I mean, of like I said, of all of the deer that I've handled the whole time you've had this, have I ever had a mishap? Never. Never. And then, I mean, I've never miscut one. I've never dropped one. I've never broken a tine. Nothing. The biggest goddamn deer in my life, and I'm I'm the one taking care of it because I don't want to fuck anything up. Lo and behold, I break an antler. God damn it. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, man. Speaking of uh, bullshit out there in the, uh, in the uh, field, yesterday, me and Hershey went and hunted a deer stand on the north end of the property. And we drove uh, my Kawasaki Mule Pro FX over there, parked, you know, 500 yards from the deer stand. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to walk in. And as we're walking in, goddamn Teddy. Here's the funny thing. The other day, Teddy was over at my house over here. I got two. That's a double wide and triple wide. Teddy stays over here. And that's one. my wife and I stay over in that other one. So every time my uh, smoke alarms go off when I'm barbecuing or something, the smoke alarms at my house will go off. And my wife, who can hear... She's probably hearing this conversation <laughs> as she's 100 yards away in the other house. Uh, I can't hear fuck off. So Teddy knows that I can't hear. He goes, dude, you don't hear that? I said, what? He goes, your smoke alarm's going off. I said, okay, which one? <laughs> so Teddy goes and waves, a, waves a, a towel in front of it to clear the smoke out of it, and the fucking smoke detector shuts off. I'm trying to give you a sense of how bad my hearing really is. But I'll tell you something. When you're walking down the fucking Sendero trying to get in the deer stand, all of a sudden, man, that rattlesnake started rattling. And, we, and here's the here's the interesting thing about it, Teddy. This is the first time I've owned this ranch going on almost nine years, and I've seen a bunch of snakes mm -hmm. uh, when they're crawling, when they're in action, but never really had one just sit up and rattle at me and give, give me the warning rattle. Mm-hmm. And it was very fucking distinct. I think there's a line in a movie. I think they started blasting a bunch of machine. I think they started blasting a bunch of machine guns, and I think they were saying, "No, oh, this is the AK-47. This has a very unique sound. You know, when you're being shot at, whatever, blah blah, yeah. whatever war movie it was." Man, that fucking Texas rattlesnake. When I saw it starts rattling, and the thing about it is, he didn't wait till we got up on him. Her, she always walks ahead of me. Right. You know, uh, she wasn't as far as she normally is. Normally, she's about 30 yards in front of me. She's about 15 feet in front of me on this time because she's kind of tender-footed. And all of a sudden, man, I'm like, holy uh, shit, something ain't right here, man. There, this sound is danger. And I'll be goddamn. I just looked right over to my right and right there tucked away in a... In a pocket in the brush in a thick south texas brush i was only 20 yards from the deer stand and i looked to see that damn rattlesnake coiled up and i mean business position mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. said holy fuck look at this motherfucker and her she was smart enough or whatever the deal is because she's not we got dogs going crazy over here <laughs> her she's smart enough not to fucking you know go over there and I, and i said hey stay here and boy, I tell you what, I said, well, this is a great opportunity to make some social media content. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of harm's way. He's not within striking distance. He's not going anywhere. So I said, okay, I took a couple of pictures, put them on Instagram, and uh, Steve Austin BSR. And on Twitter, I'm Steve Austin BSR. And before I continue the story, Ted Fowler is Ted Fowler361 on Twitter. And this cocksucker <laughs> just started a fucking Instagram account. Teddy, what is your Instagram account? S same thing, Ted Fowler 361. Ted Fowler 361 on Instagram. Ted Fowler 361 on Instagram. So anyway, I took a couple pictures of the rattlesnake. And then uh, I'll tell you what, the scope on my gun is a Leopold uh, 3x12. And I dialed that motherfucker down to 3 power. And boy, I was aiming right at his head. But when you're that close range, it's a whole different oh, yeah. type yeah. deal. Shot him about 18 inches back from his tail, and then he started crawling off. That wasn't good enough because I can't w wound an animal. So I pumped other couple slugs in him. And it's one thing, Teddy, when you're sitting in a deer stand without any ear protection on, and you got that barrel pointed out of the deer stand, mm -hmm. sound can't blow back on you. So. <laughs> 
there we were. It was about to be prime time, and I had four bullets in that gun. I think I emptied all four slugs at him. <laughs> and I looked down. Well, fuck, I'm out of bullets. <laughs> I texted Teddy, hey, I'm out of bullets. I'm going to go back to the house and get some more. I started scrubbing, uh, you know, rummaging through my backpack and right. found out that I had some bullets. So put the shit and put some, uh, a bunch of bullets in my gun, went back and got in the deer stand or got in a deer stand for the first time. And, man, that's when everything but the kitchen sink started uh, showing up. It had some great deer. And it wasn't the deer I was looking for, but it was a badass uh, day at the office, other than the fact that that rattlesnake uh fucking alerted me to his whereabouts and we told the story way back in the day but you were turkey hunting shit three four years ago yeah about three or four turkeys were still here yes sir here's the question before we get into the rattlesnake story why did is your theory that the turkeys left because back when we bought this place we had turkeys everywhere was Mm -hmm. it the drought or was it too much rain i think it's when the river flooded and it backed all that up yeah that's where the turkeys used to roost was there in those tall trees yeah alongside of the river well when that water backed up clear past the the south fence line you know it blew all of their territory and it pushed them to a different area and they just never came back god damn and and i uh heard a couple and uh, my nephew saw a couple of, they're not back like they used to no i'll tell you back i, I was hunting a couple of years ago several years ago before they left and i literally i stopped counting at 150 birds they were heading to that corn feeder mm-hmm. over there and it was like the the sun was just coming up, and you know they got those kind of real pretty feathers on them. It was just like a shimmering ocean of turkeys. It, it, and no one believe me if, if when I tell this story, but there there was I stopped counting at 150 birds. Mm. That's how many it was. It was badass. But your crazy ass was over there, and you're notorious for always listening to your Bluetooth headphones while you while you're fucking doing your work and stuff correct correct so you was out there turkey hunting and all of a sudden you got your gimmick earphones in and then you hear something what happened i thought i was picking up static you know because i just put my decoys out in the field and i went to park the buggy in the brush and i was going to grab you know my i think i was hunting with the 22 because i wanted to head shoot them uh god damn hang on we got dogs trying to get in the house keep going teddy <laughs> this is the award-winning podcast which has never won any awards although i must digress all right teddy let these cocksucking dogs in here hey while teddy's letting the dogs in here i'm gonna take a pause for the calls and uh let our sponsors get a word in all right, we got to take a minute here to say thanks to all of you for supporting the great sponsors of the Steve Austin Show because, hey, they're the ones who let me do this for you free twice a week, and that includes DDP Yoga. My good friend, Diamond Dallas Page, is making it even easier for you to start living a healthier life with this new DDP Why Now app. And if you want to see exactly what DDP Yoga and the new DDP Why Now can do for you, check out Jared's video at ddpyoga.com slash Austin. Hey, dig this. Jared lost 313 pounds in 17 months on the DDP Yoga program. It's an unbelievable story, and you've got to see how Jared was able to change his life. And now with the DDP Why Now app, it's even easier to get on that path to healthy living. The app offers exclusive live workouts with DDP from the DDP Yoga Performance Center, a nutrition guide, recipes, and access to the DDP live cooking shows. DDP got it all for you. You can earn points and redeem them for special rewards. The app has Bluetooth heart rate monitor compatibility and is available on iOS, Android, and on the web. So get started living a healthy life with DDP Yoga and make it easy on yourself. Download the DDP Why Now app, and here's even more motivation for you. If you buy DDP Yoga at ddpyoga.com slash Austin, you'll get three free months of DDP Why Now app. So go to ddpyoga.com slash Austin to take advantage of this special offer. That's ddpyoga.com slash Austin. You make the commitment, DDP will get you the results. trying to record an award-winning podcast i'll get back to that as this podcast just won an award for the uh wwe slammies original network programming award for the stone cold podcast are you dogs happy now 
fucking no, Cassie, Mara, Tula, you motherfuckers. <laughs> I love you to death, but we're trying to record an award-winning podcast here. With y'all's loud asses, I don't know if we stand a fucking chance. <laughs> but you talk about organic, real canine activity. <laughs> this is what we got. Oh, we got Here's it. Here, Mira. So there you were, turkey hunting like a motherfucker with a twenty two trying to take a headshot. Earphones plugged in, and you you think you got some motherfucking static? Yeah, because I turned the turned the buggy off, and I I swear to God, man, I thought I was picking up static. I've got my back to the brush, and I'm reaching over to grab my backpack, and I'm going, God damn, something ain't right. So I put it on pause, and then as soon as I put it on pause, boy, you can't mistake that sound, and I'm like, man, you're asshole puckers up and it's like son of a bitch i turn around and look and i had parked the buggy within six feet of where it was at and that thing's curled up or coiled up you know raised up off of the ground rattling like a son of a bitch and i'm like good god so i you know ease around to the other side Got to take a few pictures, you know, get a photo. <laughs> you, know, photo op. you fucking whore. <laughs> get a photo op, yeah. You know, and then I, once, you know, once I calm down a little bit, then I blast yeah, it. Yeah, but you know, with the rattlesnake, you never just uh, turn your back to the rattlesnake and do the one so he's in the back. <laughs> That's not the fucking opportunity you take. No, no, no. Everything is facing the cocksucker because, you know, hey, you never trust a rattlesnake. Oh, I put, I put the buggy between. Between he and I, I got to know the buggy. Yeah. 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 No shit squat down and be like a selfie. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, there ain't nothing like hearing him goddamn cocksuckers rattle. No. Damn sure that is a come to Jesus sound. And if you don't wake the fuck up and see what's going on, you are a dumb bastard. Correct. Yeah, no, we gave up on the headphones, you know, while I'm out there. I'll listen, you know, when I'm sitting in a deer stand before the feeder goes off, I may yeah. listen to a little music. But if I'm out in the field doing stuff, no, no. Too hey, dangerous. dude, tell me about this. Uh, a lot of times Teddy get out to his deer stand and or after the primetime hunt when it's too dark to really make a good decision because you don't make any mistakes out here. And you can never take a bullet back. And, man, we're all about the deer and we're all about premier safety. Uh <clears throat> Some, but sometimes you'll blow that coyote call yeah. before before it's getting good or right after prime time. Uh, how how you been doing with the coyote call? You can call anything in? Because I busted about four coyotes this year. Man, I, at uh, where I shot Jack Daniels, yeah. that same stand, boy, I called one in, and, I mean, he was coming full speed. Got to within about 120 yards, and he took a quick right-hand turn and went into the brush. And I thought he was going to loop around. You know, and come out, and he never came out, never came out. So I blew that call again. Hell, he'd close the distance to within about 60 yards, and he was standing on the pipeline. And, you know, I'm, I'm rolling around inside of that blind, and with a coyote, you can't move because they pick you off. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm looking one way, and he's, you know, 180 degrees the other way. And by the time I turn around, he's looking right at me and, you know, shows me his ass, and away he goes. Yeah, but it's a lot of fun to do that. Man, I've had a, a, a man just riding around on my Kawasaki mule. I'll hit that west fence line and on that all-weather road, and for some reason they just love that area. And and then I was hunting the southwest corner, and one was coming up from 425 yards. I'd ranged it. It crossed over to the low-fence side, and, man, that 308, that, 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 that gun is just money. And the first one was a 230, 239, and the last one, once I got to the Coyote and, and ranged back to the stand, that was a 289-yard shot. And I'm dialed in dead on at 100 for management, yeah. uh, you know, process on the deer. I just held up a cut here above his shoulder line and just, boom, smoked his ass. But uh, you know, I enjoy shooting them damn coyotes. And then I was going to put my coyote call in my backpack, but mm-hmm. – her, she chewed mine up, and it just makes it kind of a sound like I'd try to call in a duck. So at this point, you know, like, if, if you want to get me anything for Christmas, a coyote call. <laughs> I got a couple extra ones. <laughs> Dude, if they've hit your mouth, yeah, no, I'll wash, it. I'll, yeah, I'll wash it off and put a bow on it. It'll be fine. It'll be all right. Hey, whoa, whoa. <laughs> one, one, one guy has blown a call. That's his call forever. <laughs> Teddy, uh, let me see. You just, uh, I busted the hydraulic line on that tractor. Did you put that line back on? No, there? not yet. But not yet. So you wired up the John Deere and the John Deere's ready to go. Yeah, yeah. I greased up the deck and the tractor, all the Komodo stuff, yep. and then fixed the wiring. Komodo. Komodo. Stacy, who yep. puts my podcast together, that's a Komodo <laughs> tractor. Yep. Uh, what else do we need to do out here? 
I mean, the fucking ranch is tight. What, oh, yeah, yeah. No, just, uh, you know, wash. Put a new battery in the gate back there. Wash some vehicles. That's really all we got yeah, left yeah, to yeah. do. Yeah, no, fix the automatic gate opener. That's good to go. Hey, Teddy, uh, I had people, uh, I sent out a tweet while ago, T. Austin BSR. Right. And then uh, I said, hey, I'm fixing to be talking to Ted Fowler. If you guys got some questions, uh, send them on in. If you got <laughs> Let her <laughs> rip. Here's the thing, Teddy. I said, if you have any questions or, or want some advice, <laughs> 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 who in the flying fuck would ask you or me for some goddamn advice? <laughs> but we'll see if there's any advice questions on there. And we'll, I'm going to start off with this one. L- uh, let me break this down. This is Brian from Tennessee. Hey, Brian, I appreciate you sending in uh, this uh email but he goes hey man listen to the older podcast someone asked as to why you don't use old catchphrases very much and i responded by saying hey man this is a steve austin show not the stone cold steve austin show so uh basically yeah man uh, i don't sit around and ted uh, if you ever say give me a hell yeah no or, uh, no stop a mud hole in your no. ass well, I, 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 i'm not stone cold out here I'm, no i'm fucking steve austin <laughs> It's like that comment you made the other day. If if Stone Cold was out here, nobody would be on the ranch. <laughs> he wouldn't let anybody on the ranch. <laughs> hey, now, let, 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 let me give it to you, though, straight to I, I gave that motherfucker in that truck a little bit of Stone Cold. <laughs> and, but that, no, when I was Steve Austin on the shoot, goddamn. Here's a question from, uh, from Roberto Gomez. He said, let's cut through the bullshit, Steve. Do you ever get along with HBK? And he's from Laredo, Texas. God damn, Roberto. Of course I get uh, along with HBK. He was just down here at the ranch the other day. We recorded in a, uh, an award-winning podcast. So, yeah, man, we're, we're good friends from way back. We weren't friends back in the day when we was running up and down the road because Sean was in a little bit of different mindset back then. But, man, he's come a long ways, and, and uh, he's doing great. So, yes, I consider Sean a damn good friend, and he's a good man, and he's doing good things right now. God damn, he's got a hell of a damn ranch over in West Texas, Teddy. He's mm, killing yeah. a hell of a goddamn deer. Yeah, saw so that Sean's deer. doing well, and he is a friend. Here's one for you. Hey, Steve Austin, BSR, and Ted Fallon, 361 on Twitter. Being a deer hunter myself, I wanted to know what is the most successful way to stop a deer from moving. Is it the good old-fashioned whistle or the always effective, hey, deer? <laughs> and then it'll do a second question. Also, God damn, my fucking email uh, cut off. Well, dude, you know me and the whistle. It's just, that ain't my go-to. Hey, man, when I'm trying to stop a deer, I mean, I'll, I'll give it you know, that That's my go-to, you know. And I, like I said on the last podcast, we was yelling. I was yelling at that motherfucking yeah. deer. He didn't get flying shit. Yeah. I think that deer was named Helen Keller. But uh, Teddy can't whistle that good. Nope. <laughs> but for me, uh, personally, I man, I've turned and stopped a lot of deer with the whistle. Okay, now you 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 might go interview one of these hot shots who's got a hunting show on uh, Adventure Channel or Outdoor Channel or Adrenaline or wherever the fuck they got the damn shows on, and they might give you a different answer and say, "Hey, that's bullshit. It worked for my stupid ass." Here's one for you, Teddy. Also, when we see a Ted Fowler Construction Italian Garlic Bread Cooking Shirt. <laughs> Price is higher than giraffe, pussy. Keep up the great podcast. Love when Teddy's on the show. Swigger Broken Skull IPA for the working man. Well, goddamn, Teddy doesn't drink on my broken skull. I just sent, sent some more in. Questions for Steve and Teddy from Travis Reynolds. Here we go. Loading email. Slow internet service over here. So when that happens, you just sit here and shoot the shit and wait for the email to pop up. Goddamn it, it's 1.35 p.m. I've got to do about a... Eh, about a 10 minute open uh, a little bit of a close i'll do my reads i've been a deer stand by 4 30 hey steve like anyone who's ever spent a money dying to watch you beat the holy piss out of Mr. man i'm a huge fan my question is do either of you believe in ghosts or have you ever witnessed anything paranormal come to kentucky and i'll take you on a ghost hunt thanks and swig a beer for the ghost hunting man travis reynolds from flatline paranormal teddy you ever had a paranormal or a ghost experience? No. No, nothing. Nothing with a ghost. I had a couple of relationships that were nightmares, but none. Any relationships <laughs> that were paranormal? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think if I even had one that was normal. I'm not a paranormal. ghost guy. <laughs> no. I don't believe in ghosts. A lot of people say they see the ghost or whatever, or they got a picture of a ghost in a picture or whatever, some kind of discombobulation on a film development. 
Uh, man, me not so much. I, I can't. I've never witnessed anything paranormal. No. The last thing I witnessed it was para fucked up was that goddamn idiot <laughs> truck driver trying to pass me in the right lane when the right lane ran out. Love advice. Here God we go. Damn, hello. <laughs> the doctor. Hashtag hello. <laughs> the doctor is in. <laughs> the doctor's in. <laughs> Fuck the doctor. Drew ain't got shit on our ass. Here we go. Take it serious for a minute. All right. All right, that's long enough. <laughs> hey, guys, I live in a college town. I'm about to turn 28. In this town that is considered old to the women you meet at bars, I'm not ugly, so I do pretty well snag and trim, but it's getting harder. Do you recommend winding down and trying to settle down now or keep on keeping on? Love the podcast and swig a beer to you both. Hold on. He lives in a college town. He's about to turn 28 in this town that is considered old to the women you meet at bars. I don't know what he's meaning by that. It, it, he's in there with the 21, 22, 23-year-old chicks, and they're going, ooh, you're 28? Man, you're old. Yeah, he's looking at it totally wrong, man. you got to... First off, don't don't settle down. Don't wind down. Don't settle down. Nope. You got. Dude, the, you're 28 years old. You got your whole life in front of you. Don't fuck it up now. Dude, you go you go seven years one way or the other. You can date down to 21. You can date up to 35. Hello, that's the formula. Okay, Teddy. Uh, you had a failed marriage at what age? 30. 30. So see, listen. Uh, What's his name? Goddamn. Stone Wrestling is his, uh, Stoner Wrestling is his Twitter name. Stoner Wrestling, Teddy married a chick when he was 30, and it turned to, fuck, it went to hell in a handbasket. Dude, I thought. Lost his couch. TV. Kitchen table. Kitchen table. Washer, dryer. Washer, dryer. The only thing I had left was a bed. Only thing lost this motherfucker head was a bed. You're 28 years old, and you want to ask you want to tell you to settle down? <laughs> Fuck! Goddamn last thing you need to do is settle down. Just stay single. Keep on going out there doing your mingle, and then uh, get through the holiday season. Couple years down the road, think about tying the square knot, dude. You're too young to get married. Believe me, I've been there four motherfucking times. I'm t- I'm I'm speaking to you from my heart. And from a wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fuck your shit up. Mm. And if you do get married, if you do decide, hey, fuck Steve and Ted, fuck your advice, well, get your prenup. Because I don't give a shit what you got. When you got to give up half of everything or anything that you got, that's a lot. So get your goddamn prenup. Well, you're goddamn right. I, a- unless you know. she's loaded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's, <laughs> say, hey, hey, goddamn, I'm try, <laughs> trying to help motherfucker out. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I'm kidding. That. I mean that with all due respect to, to the females out there. Fuck, I don't. I would. <laughs> well, you know what I'm trying to say, Ted. This no, is a award winning podcast, I know. God damn it! You know, know, fuck, I'm trying to be straight up on advice. It was a rib. Work with me. No, dude, I, I'd never Sometimes get married again. Sometimes you got to make chicken salad out of chicken shit. No, no. Teddy, you were in a serious relationship. I really thought you was going to buy a ring and uh, ask us um, illustrious young lady to marry you, and it didn't turn out so rosy. No, but. Like I said, I kept my furniture, kept my TV. It's all, it's all good, you know. Just one more knot on my head, and down the road we go. Here's a question from Rich. He says, "What are your plans for Christmas Day? You going to do any hunting? How can I get your IPA in the Cleveland, Ohio area?" Hey, Rich, I think you can get the IPA if you go to InsideTheCellar.com and order it online. If Ohio accepts out-of-state deliveries, and as far as Christmas Day. Uh, we're going to be chilling here at the ranch on Christmas Eve. I'm going down to my mom and dad's house to visit them with Kristen. And then on Christmas Day, I'm going to be hunting. Teddy, what are you going to be doing on Christmas Day? Do the same thing. Hunt, and then drink, and then hunt. Well, goddamn. You ain't going to get hot about it. <laughs> here, here's an uh, interesting question, Teddy. Will you ever get Conor McGregor to, on your podcast? Hey, I'd love to have Conor McGregor on the podcast. Dude kicks ass. And you know what? When I call that match, Teddy, I pick uh, Jose Aldo because my goddamn he ain't been defeated in 10 years. Right. But when I look back, hindsight being 2020, really, Conor McGregor had all the momentum. And when Jose uh, uh, opted out of that one fight because of a rib injury, man, Conor just gained a lot of momentum. And then with the victory over Chad Mendez, and then boom, flashed Jose Aldo at the 13-second 13, 13 mark. 
And then Jose tried to say, hey, man, it really wasn't a fight. No, it really was a fight. Yeah. It just happened that quick. Yeah. You threw, he threw, and he threw harder. Yeah, and correct. Like, a talk, like, he, like he always says, you can't get away from that big left hand, big right hand, whatever it is. And the dude, at that body weight, at that fight weight, he's a big dude. Yeah, so, yeah, Jose absolutely. Aldo got his clock clean. It is, it, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, of course, I'd love to have him on the show. Hey, man. How's the hunting going for you guys? Fuck, it's going stellar. Enjoy the deer talk, and uh, I've really enjoyed the last few Ted shows. Keep up the good work. Ted, keep up the good work. We'll do our best. We'll do our best. Here's one from Denise. What does Denise have to say? Hey, my name is Denise. I'm a big fan. I'm wondering what's your favorite IPA? <laughs> Goddamn, let me <laughs> spend about 45 minutes telling you what my favorite IPA is. My favorite IPA comes from a place named El Segundo Brewing Company. The name of the beer is Steve Austin's Broken Skull IPA. It's 6.7% alcohol. I believe on the IBUs it's 40, and the other numbers I can't technically tell you now because they don't have a bottle in front of me. I don't have the information. But if you're ever out there in the California area, I would suggest you stop by the brewery, El Segundo Brewing at 140 Main Street in El Segundo, California. If not, if you're in California, go over to Whole Foods or to, uh, what's the name of that uh, wine place? Total Wines. Go to Total Wines and pick up a bottle and try it yourself. That is my favorite IPA. Teddy, here's a question for you. From Andrew, it says, Ted the Builder. Hi, Stone Cold and Teddy. My question is kind of related to the guy from Luton a couple of weeks ago who asked if Stone Cold was coming to the U.K. next year, but I want to see if Ted is free for a visit. I'm an architect, and most of the builders over here don't know shit from clay, and as Ted sounds like a knowledgeable kind of guy, questionable, we could do with his expertise. I don't know what the minimum wage is there over in the U.S., but sure, we could match it. Travel expenses not included. I would also like to mention my seven-year-old is a huge fan of Stone Cold, not Teddy. Sorry, Ted. (laughs) Ouch. Hey, Andrew, best wishes from Andrew. Andrew, thank you for the email. Let me ask you, let me tell you something right here. Goddamn, Teddy is higher than a giraffe pussy. I, you know, this motherfucker does quality, square ass, honest, hard work. You pay for that because you get what the man advertises. Absolute perfection. When he signs on for a job, you will get your shit done right. That being said, to get this motherfucker to the UK to straighten out some of y'all shit, y'all got some badass architecture over there. England's old motherfucker. There's a lot of history over there. Now, you know, if I was to nitpick, I would say widen up the roads a little bit, switch the drivers to the other side of the road, and take all the twists and turns out of them. But that's not Ted's department. Ted, could you go over to the UK and straighten shit out over there? No, dude. I, I come with too much baggage, you know, with the dogs and stuff like that. Uh, Business is ripping and roaring in Rockport. There's no reason to leave. I like Texas. Well, goddamn you got a lot of fans over in the UK. You just can't shit on the UK fans like that. I, I told you, man. I would I would go along with you as a traveling road show for a couple of days and then come back. <laughs> Let me answer the question for you. Now, now Teddy's into like wood construction. Y'all like y'all got a lot of castles and shit like that over there. And I dig them. Y'all got some badass shit. But I don't know how Teddy would do trying to install a new window on a castle. Well, could it's a good question. It? Good question. I'm sure I could figure it well, out. As high as your shit is in Texas, <laughs> god damn. Oh, it and, wouldn't and be plus, cheap. You get paid in pounds over there. I it, think the pound is probably stronger than the dollar, so you can make some ducats over at Teddy. Maybe I should think about a three month sabbatical you over might there. Go over and just fall in love with an English chick, bring her ass <laughs> over here, shit, come on back and sell her down. What about old Pippa? Is she hooked up yet? Hello. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is Pippa? The uh, oh goddamn Middleton. She her sister married. Uh, oh goddamn! See that? Yeah. Shows What's what the I name? Know. Listen, listen, Teddy. When I'm out here at the Broken Skull Ranch, I'm so far disconnected from goddamn technology. I don't know where to shit or wind my watch. Someone asked me a question the other day about some shit. I said, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> And said, man, it's just, these are current events. <laughs> goddamn, if I ain't out there banging my weights, I'm working out four times a week. I hired a goddamn strength coach to make my workouts for me. Been lifting heavy-ass weights. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm out here to prove that Patron Silver, Margarita Mix, and Tamales can build quality mass. 
So far, I don't know about the quality mass, but I've got mass, mass. and I've gotten strong as a motherfucker. And if I'm not doing that, I'm out here working on a goddamn tractor, or I'm sitting in the tractor mowing, or I'm out there sitting in the deer stand, or I'm out there cleaning up a goddamn deer. I ain't got time to keep up with no fucking new bullshit. Dude, I thought she was talking about Pippi Longstock. No, 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 no. Her, like I said, her sister married. Uh, God damn, who's the kid that's going to be running England? Uh, Prince Davis. No, Charles. <laughs> damn. Fuck, I don't Charles know, is dude. the dad, the redheaded kid. Ah, fuck and I anyway, know, anyway. I no disrespect no. to the royal family. Yeah. Hey, swig a beer to Big Bend over there. <laughs> 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 All right, here's one. Do you know the origin of the phrase "deader than Kelsey's nuts"? Thanks, Adam. I don't have a fucking clue. No, I don't. I don't. I've heard the saying plenty of times, and I've said it deader than Kelsey's nuts, but I don't even know what it means. No, I don't know. If you know what deader than Kelsey's nuts means, send it in to questions <laughs> at steveaustinshow dot com. I've got the internet out here, and I've got my computer in front of me, but it'd take me too long to find out how dead and why Kelsey's nuts died by the time I'm rolling sound on this here illustrious podcast. I'll guarantee you one fucking thing right now, Teddy. Sure as I'm sitting here with a goddamn bald head and a full fucking beard, two hundred eighty pounds, and a margarita. This podcast ain't going to win a motherfucking award. But, <laughs> P.S., I'd like to nominate Odell Beckham Jr. of the New York Giants for the Cocksucker of the Week Award. Well, did you see what he did? Yeah. I, I thought, man, and Odell Beckham Jr. is one of my favorite players. So, I can't uh, give him the Cocksucker of the Week Award because, uh, man, I think the dude got heated up. They're just out there trying to play football. And the way those guys are scrapping out there these days, it's rough, it's tough. All that wide open space they're playing in, it gets real aggressive. So I kind of, it, it was a shot he took, and it was a head shot, but I can't give him the, the, the CSOW uh, award for that. I've already given it to a truck driver who almost killed me. And if Ted... And I got uh, an honorable you know, mention. Ted, <laughs> Ted, Ted was second in line, so I guess you could put him third in line. <laughs> so, oh, Doug, you're safe so far. Swig a beer. You're a badass receiver, and I enjoy watching you play. Let's move on, Teddy. Loading up email right now. Hey, Steve, love the show. As good as the wrestling kind is, nothing beats you and old Teddy Valley shooting the shit. You're two funny bastards. What's your favorite Christmas gift you got as a child? Merry Christmas and keep up the audio whoop ass coming in 2016, Ben Rich. Well, I mean, you know, fuck. We, we still got about seven minutes to go. We could shit the bed on this podcast, and I, it might not be worth the flying fuck, but we're trying. I told Teddy earlier when I headed into town, I said, God damn, you need to think of some shit because if it wasn't for that guy killing me, I wouldn't have no material. Teddy, what was the favorite Christmas gift you got as a child? Man, I got a remote control boat when I was about 10 or 11. Well, where'd you take that motherfucker? You grew up in Phoenix. Y'all got any water? Yeah, City it? Park. Well, you didn't get hot about it. Fuck, I didn't know. City Park, yeah. No, I had that thing for yeah, about... Dude, the problem was there was a no wake zone, so you had to go real slow. <laughs> <laughs> now, dude, there's a little wooden bridge that went over the, you know, the walkway there, and I had that boat for all of two days, and I ran it into the bridge and sunk it. It's like, dude, really... <laughs> Cried all the way home. I was a little kid, yeah. <laughs> so, so what? That was it. That was it. Yeah, just well, a little plastic yeah, but boat. At first, but at first, Teddy, you were very enamored with this goddamn uh, little wooden boat. So, why didn't you go uh, rustle up another one and pursue this passion of electronic boat watering? It is eleven years old. I wasn't working yet. I didn't have any money. You know. Well, well goddamn. Uh, here's an interesting question. Just comes in from Adrian from Melbourne, Australia. Motherfuckers from all over the world listen to this show, Teddy. And this guy says, Adrian, he says, you need to do a show on all things sex related. E.g., your theories on trim, women, Viagra, relationships, busting a nut, etc. Would be hilarious if it was an Unleashed podcast so you could tell some funny stories of stuff that happened to you, those uh, around you. Uh, swig a pussy for the working man. Hey, dude, I'm down with a swig of pussy. Adrian, uh, man, we cover enough of that bullshit on the damn show as it, uh, as it, uh, you know, fuck, we got enough shit about trim and yeah. angry and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and I go back to my old theory. It's, it's hard to eat pussy when you ate a Viagra because you can't breathe. You got to get down. I'm still coming back with that pussy snorkel. <laughs> I got in line. I think it's already been patented, but I got, I had a dream the other night. And uh, I'm going to reinvent the pussy snorkel. 
Here's one from fucking uh, Adrian Landa. I'm very, I'm very interested in getting on the show. I still haven't found a link on your page or how to apply. What show are you talking about? You talking about the Broken Skull Challenge? You talking about the Redneck Island? You talking about the Steve Austin show? I got two phone numbers here for Adrian. Fuck. Which show do you think he's talking about? Probably Broken Skull Challenge. God damn it, there's only one way to find out. Let me call this motherfucker up right now. <laughs> Teddy, fill some time here while I'm going through my settings here and changing. What else happened this morning? Anything good? Man, went out to went out to go hunting this morning. Of course, it's foggy, and it never fails if you opt to stay in because you get up at 5.30 in the morning, look out, and... You can't see out the it's front foggy. yard, it's fog. Yeah. So you stay in, and hell, once the sun comes up, it burns off real quick. So you could have gotten a hunt in. Yeah. And I figured, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go sit in a deer blind, even though I can't see 10 feet in front of me. And it was that way until about 8.30 this morning. Of course, feeder went off, deer fed and left, and I never saw a damn thing. And that's when I was leaving to go to town before I got killed by, almost got killed by the truck driver to get my hydraulic hose from a tractor. And then I said, what'd you see? He goes, fuck, it was too foggy. And I said to him, you ain't learned enough not to go out in the fog yet. So goddamn. So we're calling up Adrian. I want to ask him what show that he wants to be on. Well, this should be good. Or it'll be the shits. <laughs> Nonetheless. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> a lot of times people won't answer a phone call when it says uh, blocked uh, ID. Yeah. Person cannot be reached at the moment. Uh. I ain't gonna leave a motherfucking message. Goddamn, I'm trying to ask you what show you want to be on. Nine four four. I'm gonna call his other numbers. See yeah. if the motherfucker answers this one. <laughs> I'm very interested in getting on the show. What if you're very interested? You got to take my phone call. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Here we go again. <laughs> Who invented that music for what what's that? Is that the uh Hello? Hey, is Adrian in? Uh yeah, who's calling? This is Steve. Steve, uh just a moment. Okay. I'm calling him at work. Hello? Hello, Adrian, this is Steve Austin calling from the Steve Austin show. Yes, sir. Hey, you sent me an email that says you're very interested on getting on the show. I got three shows. I got the Broken Skull Challenge, I got Redneck Island, and I got the Steve Austin Show podcast. Right now, I'm recording this uh, here conversation for the Steve Austin Show Unleashed podcast. Which show sir. are you talking about trying to get on? Well, the first one, sir. Which other one, sir? What, the Broken Skull Challenge? Yes, sir. Where are you based out of? Uh, Corpus Christi, Texas, sir. Corpus Christi, Texas. You a military man? Yes, sir. I was in the Marine Corps, sir, for four years. That sounds like it. Sounds like it. Uh, much respect for your service. Uh, are you in shape? Yes, sir. I do work out and stuff, sir. Uh, how old are you now? I just turned uh, 42, sir. I, yeah, 42. You almost. I just turned 51. Are you still in shape? Is, you know, we got some young bucks on that show to kick ass. Yes, sir. This is you, Stone Cold. Man, this is badass, man. Yeah, this is going to be on the podcast <laughs> tomorrow. Man, this is crazy. Hey, dude, uh, all you got to do is uh, the show comes back on air on January 3rd. There's going to be 18 episodes on CMT Network. So I, yes, I want you to do a little bit of homework, Adrian. I want you to watch these bad motherfuckers do what they do. And then when they start showing that information on the screen, send in your yes, application sir. then, and then come on out there to Agua Dulce, California, where we film it, and we will unleash you so you can kick all the ass that you want to. Man, this is badass, sir. I love you, man. I, I, I respect everything you've done, sir. And I've seen you on movies and everything, you know what I mean? Hey, man, well, I appreciate your email, and I appreciate your service for our country. And uh, yes, me and Teddy Fowler just sitting there recording a podcast. Are you down with me playing this uh, this phone call on the podcast tomorrow? Yes, sir. You can do that, sir. Okay. Well, Adrian, I didn't mention your last name, so your identity is protect protected. So I appreciate your email, and that's the best way to get out onto the Broken Skull Challenge. I look forward to seeing you, and look forward to seeing you kick some ass. Yes, sir. I appreciate it, sir. Merry Christmas to you and your family. You too, sir. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
<laughs> All right, Teddy. <laughs> Goddamn, what a feel-good story to wrap up this illustrious podcast. There's your Christmas present. Goddamn it. He was coming out there, I'm telling you. Well, we had some people out there about uh, psh, people in their early 40s have come out there and totally smoked some ass. So yeah. You come out there, but it ain't no walk in the park. Dude, wait till you start seeing uh, these new episodes and Broken Skull Challenge. Let me go ahead and throw a plug out for that motherfucker right now. Since, you know, I can throw out a plug because I didn't get killed by that truck driver outside of Poteet, you <laughs> cocksucker. <laughs> Uh, Broken Skull Challenge uh, season premieres on January 3rd on CMT. It's the baddest, toughest, coolest, realest motherfucking show on television, and that's the bottom line because I said so. And then following that up, January 28th will be Redneck Island Battle at the Lake. We're going to have 12 people come back from last year with 12 people coming in from New Year. So it's the old school versus the new school, and they got to follow along and see how these old school cats do it. So nonetheless, I'll have two shows on the CMT Network coming up here in January. But January 3rd is target date for Broken School Challenge, and it's a badass shit. These people all across the United States from all walks of life come out there and put their shit on the line. And with that being said... Hey, Teddy, I just released five new badass T-shirts from the Broken Skull Challenge uh, just yesterday on ProWrestlingTees.com slash Steve Austin. So I released some before Christmas. This is kind of like right before Christmas, but nonetheless... 20% 20% off the motherfucker, so you can save a goddamn dime to hook a brother up, buy him a Christmas present, a belated Christmas present, or whatever. But I wanted to put these shirts out before the holidays hit, and at least you had a chance to buy them at a discounted rate because, hey, we sell these cocksuckers for nineteen ninety nine to begin with. That's cheap as a motherfucker. And then when you throw 20% on that motherfucker to save another uh, goddamn chunk of money, that's really helping a brother out. Now, I would think to say, Teddy, I'm not trying to get rich selling and t-shirts trying to work look out for the working man no absolutely not i mean it is a very affordable price and then like you're saying to put 20 percent on top of that you know take 20 percent off yeah god damn i mean i don't know what else I could do uh pay you 19.99 to take the shirt for free and i'll ship the motherfucker for free too hey teddy guess what Broken Skull IPA has been a tremendous success. You've had several bottles of it. You shoot from the hip. What do you think about this goddamn beer? I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, You know, and being a bourbon drinker, I like darker beer, heavier beer, and it is good quality beer. Real deal. I'm happy with it. It's been kicking uh, ass over in the uh, California scene, and you can get it at uh, Total Wines, you can get it at Whole Foods, and you can order it online if your state will allow delivery uh, from InsideTheCellar.com. Man, if you're in the El Segundo area, they just brewed up a batch of something called Standard Crude. It's 11.5% alcohol. They sent me a growler of that. Man, go go get you a little swig of that because that's on tap only, and it's some badass shit. You love that beer, didn't you? Yeah, I did. It's yeah, good I did. fucking beer. Yes, sir. And, uh, man, as much as I like the Devil's Path... Ugh, that's good beer. I think that fucking uh, standard crude was awesome. But, Teddy, I got shit to do. We got about an hour and five minutes in. Adrian, I hope to see you down at the Broken Skull Ranch uh, and, and to go through the challenge process. And thanks, everybody, for their questions. Teddy, is there anything else you'd like to uh, add to the podcast? No, I guess wish everybody Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Be safe on the road if you're traveling to go see your relatives. Just be careful out there. Hey, buckle up, put your fucking seatbelt on, and uh, share the road, God damn it! Uh, this cocksucking truck driver, you know, you, you ain't that big of a hurry. And even when I'm driving 75, 85, or whatever, man, I'm safe. I pass in the safe zones, and, man, it, it is what it is. Again, uh, my cocksucker of the week award goes to that pile of shit truck driver that was driving that truck down near ended my life. And with 2016 looming in front of me, I got a cool, uh, a couple of cool projects that I'm about to announce, Teddy. You know, it had been shits uh, for my obituary to be in the newspaper <laughs> and say, yeah, he was going to come out with this, this, and this in 2016. Unfortunately, he met his demise because of some cocksucker of the week uh, truck driver who ended his life unceremoniously on the side of the road outside of Poteet, Texas. Probably driving and sending a text message at the same time. End podcast. <laughs> 
Merry Christmas, everybody, goddammit. I'm just fucking with you. Yeah, that truck driving incident really did happen. I really was pissed off, but I don't want to come across like I'm just a fucking hothead or madder than a fucking hornet. I drank my margarita. All's good. I'm happy as hell. Me and Ted, if you go climb up in a deer stand, enjoy the rest of the holidays, and Merry Christmas to everybody. We out. <laughs> Stay tuned for the latest AP News headlines from Podcast One right after this. This New Year's at Guitar Center, it's time to play music. Come in and get hands-on with the world's best selection of guitars, drums, keyboards, and more. And with deals like a Williams Digital Piano for just $169, Ernie Ball Cobalt Slinky Guitar Strings, buy two, get one free, or a five-pack of Honer Harmonicas with case, just $15, there has never been a better time to play music. We'll help you find exactly what you're looking for and save big. New Year's weekend at Guitar Center. AP Update, I'm Ross Simpson. Former New York Governor George Pataki has told supporters tonight he's going to pull the plug on his race for the GOP presidential nomination, which never got any traction. His announcement is expected at the top of the hour. In the meantime, GOP frontrunner Donald Trump, who believes former President Bill Clinton's indiscretions will be fair game when he begins campaigning for his wife next week, was asked tonight during a live news conference on his personal plane if his own indiscretion, should he have any, be fair game. Yes, they would be. And frankly, Hillary brought up the whole thing with sexist. And all I did is reverse it on her because she's got a major problem. Happens to be right in her house. So if she wants to do that, we're going to go right after the president, the ex-president, and we'll see how it all comes out. Trump's remarks came before he left Omaha, Nebraska for a campaign rally in Council Bluffs, Iowa. I'm Ross Simpson.